This is NBC 10 at Issue. Pennsylvanians have waited too long for the day they could buy beer or wine at the grocery store. NBC 10 at Issue, changing how Pennsylvanians get wine, liquor, and beer. The state Senate must soon decide whether to follow the lead of the state house and vote to destroy the 80-year-old state store system or continue Pennsylvania's nearly unique way among states of controlling alcohol distribution. The morality, economics, and politics of privatization now on NBC 10 at Issue. Good morning, I'm Steve Highsmith. Happy Easter. Where and when someone buys a bottle of booze in Pennsylvania, what it costs and who the seller is have potentially sweeping ramifications affecting jobs, quality of life, perhaps life itself, tax revenue, school funding, crime, and more. With me are Charles Mitchell, Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of the Freedom-Based, often conservative-leaning Commonwealth Foundation, and Wendell Young IV, President of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, Local 1776, the union representing about 3,500 union workers at state in Pennsylvania. Thank you both for being here. Appreciate you taking Steve, the time. Good seeing you. Thanks for having us on. We are in a constant struggle between liberty and government intrusion or responsibility. Where in liberty is the necessity for privatizing state stores? Here's the thing, Steve. The government has a legitimate role in alcohol, and that's to control it. That's why we have a liquor control board. What government does not have a, have a role in doing is selling alcohol, marketing alcohol, using taxpayer money to convince us to buy more alcohol. That's actually a conflict of interest. Government would be better served to stick to its existing role, its, its good role, its, its correct role, which is what three out of five Pennsylvanians want it to do. Wendell Young, 48 states seem to agree with what Mr. Mitchell said in terms of the privatization of retail sales. Why are they wrong? Well, it's really not uh, correct to say 48 states. So we hear our governor running around a lot saying that 48 other states do it the way he's proposed. That's just not true. Uh, several dozen states actually control alcohol, not the way Pennsylvania does, but in different types. In terms of... Well, let me, let me just back up. 48 states do have privatized they, they retail. Do. They do, but some of those also have government-run stores, and some control the wholesale and or the retail in different About ways. About 17 or 18 that's do, do the wholesale that, that's part correct. of it in Maryland County. Maryland has a county, for and, example. And several states also sell spirits exclusively through mm -hmm. liquor stores or But or the bulk of them do, so why are they wrong? Well, I'm not saying they are wrong. I think Ed Rendell put it best uh, as someone who preferred the private sector to do it, but recognized that the system was uh, built, uh, created 80 years ago. If we were doing it, say, we'd probably build it differently, but we're not. And we have a system that's evolved over the years. What we've done here in Pennsylvania, different than other states, is continued over the years to evolve and modernize the system to a point where it provides not only good jobs, but it's a very profitable system, and the profit and the revenue from taxes go up every year at about 4 to 6 percent rate consistently over decades as you look back. So it, it, pull, taking it apart is difficult without having a big impact on taxpayers, on consumers, and the other states that came out of prohibition with a system like ours that moved to privatization, uh, selection went down, prices went up. Revenue to the states went down. And we've been debating this for two and a half years now in the state legislature, in the House. And to this day, the other side, including the Commonwealth Foundation here, hasn't shown us one study from one of those other states that privatized where things actually ended up better. So it's not as simply as simple as saying, you know, let the private sector. When you sector say better, are you talking about financially better? <laughs> yeah, financially for the state and for the consumers. Well, let me give Charles yes. a chance to respond. Steve, here's the reality. Look, Wendell has his talking points, and then that's fine. But here's the thing. Number one, I drove down to Delaware this morning. I went to Delaware. You would think I was in Pennsylvania because every license plate there was from Pennsylvania. And the, the favorite bottle of wine that I buy, $8 in Pennsylvania, $5.50 in Delaware. So you don't have to tell us about, well, we don't know what's going to happen in other states or all these scare tactics about other states. People in this area know. We go to New Jersey. We go to Delaware. And by the way, you're breaking the law when you do that in this area. The other thing to know is, yes, Wendell, you're right. 50 states, they do it lots of different ways. But here's the thing. The only other state that has a level of control that Pennsylvania has is Utah. And I think we all know Pennsylvania and Utah are very different states. And again, that's why three out of five Pennsylvanians want us to well, get out of this. You've raised a few other things there, but you, we can look at polls and say three out of five Pennsylvanians. But in a representative republic, in a democracy where we have our legislators who for 80 years have had a chance to vote on this, yep. has any legislator been voted out of office because they've maintained the state store system? I don't know, but I know even 58% of union members want this done. But the bottom line is nobody's getting voted out of office because they haven't changed the system. We haven't brought the discussion to this point yet either. All right. When you look at the price differences that you're talking about, 
The 18% tax in Pennsylvania is already included in the price. Sure. So when you compare those prices, for example, are you counting the tax that is added on in Delaware or New Jersey? I'm quoting you the two prices, and I'm saying this. The, the, own, the, uh, the own studies that are done by the PLCB show that f about half of people in this part of the state go across the border to get their, get their booze. I grew up in this area. Maybe in I Delaware, know Chester they, County, people who live there. In, in the Less Collett so counties of Philadelphia. Uh, two points. I'm so glad Charles used Delaware an example because uh, everyone who grew up in southeastern PA lives here now knows that Delaware has no taxes on consumer goods at all, anything. So lots of people travel down 202, the Blue Route, Route 1, all the time to buy lots of things, including alcohol. Delaware is a bad example to use. If you look at the studies that have actually done by newspapers who prefer privatization, by the PLCB, by Nielsen Group, is one of the, the world's best polling uh, survey organizations, uh, and any study that's been done pricing, actually Pennsylvania's prices are better than the border states more often than what you'll find in the other states with the exception of Delaware and and it's very close in Maryland because Maryland has a low excise tax on consumer goods including food and clothing so it's down around three percent if you take out the tax differences Pennsylvania is better than every one of our border states right. and nobody from the other side has presented one study to show otherwise yet Steve so, if I may that is not true uh, the Commonwealth Foundation did its own study we looked at the border states and again this is not rocket science Pennsylvanians are voting with their feet so take Delaware out of the mix when taxes are added in, you're comparing prices, it's still better in New Jersey, still better in West Virginia, still better in Ohio, you say? I'm, I'm not saying it's better in every state. The states are different. What I am saying is there is a reason why these other states do it differently. Pennsylvanians are voting with their feet, and yes, we have looked at them. Not all the prices are higher, not all the prices are lower, but in general, are prices lower when you have competition? Yes, they are. I want to talk about the effect on society that privatization may or may not have, and more when we continue more on the economics of privatization, plus, you know, would it be a win for consumers and for the state, and is there a moral component lost in this decision making ahead on NBC 10 Edition? You're watching NBC 10 at issue.